And I am so happy to be here today because, you know, I love Malaysia so much. And actually, this is my first international conference. And as you can see, I am a little bit nervous. But I am not nervous because of the audience. You know why I am nervous? Because there is my wife right here in the audience. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you see me trying to adjust my accent during the talk, don't worry. It's just me trying to please her. <laughs> so let's get started. A little bit about me. My name is Amadou Sal, and I am from Senegal, West Africa. But I live in France, where I work for Air France and KLM. So at Air France KLM, I am working for the core team of Air France KLM as a front-end tech lead. You can connect with me on social media. My name is uh, Ahasal everywhere. So today we are going to talk about Angular Material or Bootstrap. Yes, I did that. <laughs> so Angular Material or Bootstrap, which, which one is the best? Who think? Who thinks that Angular Material is the best? Please raise your hand. OK. <laughs> and who thinks that Bootstrap is the best? OK, half, half. <laughs> so <laughs> cool. But before, before, before that, I want to share the story behind this talk. So I set out to build beautiful, responsive, and maintainable web application. And I think that this is our goal, all of us, as a front-end developers. We want our application to be good-looking, responsive, and also we don't want to spend a lot of time maintaining the application. So in December uh, 2017, I was a little bit frustrated by Angular Material, mainly because of Angular Flex Layout. Who knows Angular Flex Layout? So Angular Flex Layout basically is the tool that is used to position elements on a, on a Angular application. I was frustrated by this tool because it was a little bit slow, the syntax was hard to understand, and the debugging experience was not that great. At the same time, in January 2018, Bootstrap 8 was out, and I am a curious man, so I said to myself, maybe I should try this to see what's inside Bootstrap 4, and I did that. So, I did that, and I found in Bootstrap what, uh, what I was missing in Angular Material. And I wrote an article called The Best Part of Bootstrap 4 You Are Missing in Your Angular Material Application. And actually, this is my most popular blog post. And most of my traffic in my website goes to this article. And if you see, if you take a look at my uh, Google search performance results, you will see that Many people come to my website by using the term Angular Material or Bootstrap, Bootstrap and Angular Material. So I thought that many people would be interesting, interested by this talk. That's why I am here today to talk to you about this uh, subject. And the answer may su uh, surprise you. So what is the plan? We will start by taking a look at Bootstrap. Then we will dive into Angular Material. Next, we will see the benefits we get when we mix the two, so spoiler, we will mix the two. <laughs> and in the end, I will show you um, the easy way to do taming of your Angular Material application. So let's get started. What is Bootstrap? I think that most of us have used Bootstrap at least once in our life, or we have heard of it. Who used Bootstrap in the past here? OK, not everybody. And Bootstrap actually is the most popular UI toolkit in the world. Bootstrap is built around three core principles of responsive design. What are those? So maybe I will use the clicker. <laughs> so, ah, okay, I won't, I won't use it. <laughs> so, the first principle is mobile first. What does this mean? This means that you start by building the mobile version of your website before building the desktop version. So in mobile, you have less space, so you can easily build the desktop version of your website. The second one is fluid layouts. And this means that you allow containers to scale in your web application 
based on the viewport. And the last one is major queries. So major queries means that you will write some CSS specific to the device you are targeting. So you will write different CSS depending on the size of the viewport. Okay, in Bootstrap you have actually four different parts. The first one is reboot, and I will talk about it. The grid, Bootstrap components, and Bootstrap utilities. And most of the times, developers know Bootstrap, the Bootstrap grid and Bootstrap components. But Bootstrap reboot and Bootstrap utilities are lesser known features of Bootstrap. So we will talk about uh, this subject uh, today. So every website needs a CSS reset. If you don't explicitly use a CSS reset, maybe the framework you are using has incorporated a CSS reset for you automatically. And what is a CSS reset? According to one of the first people to build a CSS reset, Eric Mayer, he says that all browsers have presentation defaults, but no browser has the same defaults. And the goal of a CSS reset is to remove these inconsistencies between the browsers. So, and in Bootstrap, you have a brand new CSS reset called Bootstrap Reboot. And actually, it is more than a CSS reset because it set what I call better defaults for your application. For example, for example by default in CSS, the, um, the border, the padding, are not taken into account in the width of your element. And most of the time, developers doesn't want that, don't want that. What they want is that they want this. They want the size of their element to be comprised of the, um, the size of the content plus the padding plus the border. And if you use Bootstrap Reboot, this is what you get for free. All these kind of things that you really want, even if you don't know it, Bootstrap sets it, uh, sets it for you. Next, we have the Bootstrap Grid. And the Bootstrap Grid is based on a CSS standard called Flexbox. Who knows Flexbox? Okay, awesome. And how does it work? We have a container, which is a home, the home for rows and columns. So here I have one row, two rows. And inside rows, we have columns. So I have here my first column and my second column. And columns define the actual grid cells. This is where you will put your content. And what is nice about Bootstrap is that you can specify how many units your uh, columns will take. For example, here my first column will take four units out of 12, because by default, Bootstrap grid is comprised of 12 uh, units. So my second column here uh, will take eight, unit, eight units out of uh, 12. And what I, um, the Bootstrap grid is responsive. So here you see that my, uh, so I think, if, okay, so you see that here, I say call dash MD dash six, which means that on medium sized devices, my column will take half the space. And on larger size devices, devices, it will take four units out of 12. And you get this automat automatically by using Bootstrap. And if you can see that I didn't put anything for uh, mobile or smaller devices because mobile first, therefore by default, uh, Bootstrap will uh, take all the space for uh, the elements. The column will take all the space. For example, you will get this kind of uh, layout. On larger size devices, we, we will have three columns. And on medium sized devices, we will have two columns. And on mobile, everything will be sucked uh, in one column. The next part of Bootstrap is Bootstrap Utilities. And with, this is my favorite because it will, it will make you more productive. And what is a utility? It's a single immutable property value pairing. What does this mean? You have a class here, and you have a property and a value. And that's all that you will have in this CSS. And here I use uh, um, important, which is not bad. It can be bad if you abuse uh, this practice. But I want my utility to win every time I apply it to uh, 
to an element. So that's why I use important. And it should never conflict with uh, anything else. So, for example, if I take the display property, we have in Bootstrap classes like D dash uh, the value we want. So, for example, for a display block, we have a class D dash block. So, in your HTML, you just put this class and your element will be a block element. We have the same for flex, D dash flex. And, for, and we have many, many, many utilities. What is nice about Bootstrap utilities, utilities is that they are responsive also, like the grid. So for example here, I want my element to be hidden on small devices. That's why I put D dash none. And I don't put a breakpoint because mobile first. So this will apply uh, on smaller devices. So on smaller devices, my element will be hidden. But on larger devices, it will be a flex container. This is very easy to do. You just drop two classes instead of writing a lot of media queries in your CSS. And you have this kind of utility, utilities in Bootstrap all around. You have things for display, padding, margin, flexbox, and so on. And they are easy to understand. For example, PT3 mean, means padding top three. So, so let's play a game. What does PB3 mean? Padding bottom, thank you. <laughs> okay, and PY means padding, vertical padding. So it's, it's the combination of padding top and padding bottom. Very easy to understand. And if you use it a little bit, you will get uh, comfortable with uh, using these kind of utilities. And we have things like margin, margin left three, margin left on medium sized devices, and margin horizontal. And the last part of Bootstrap, Bootstrap components. This is maybe the reason why you hate uh, Bootstrap. But to me, what is not really great in Bootstrap is the fact that Bootstrap components uses jQuery. You know, <laughs> our famous uh, jQuery. So Bootstrap components are not native to Angular. For me, this is the main problem of using Bootstrap with Angular, but the rest is great. So to recap for this session, section, in Bootstrap you have a great CSS reset. We have a great CSS layout system with the grid. We have tons of CSS utilities, but the components are not so great. Let's see what's inside Angular material. But first, what is Angular material? Angular material, instead of, um, they are Angular components. So they are native to Angular. It is built with Angular for Angular. And Angular components implements material design. And material design is Google's design system. So if you have an Android device, you already know what is material design. Because all Google application implements material design. And Angular material components are built by the Angular team. So we can expect the same quality uh, as in the Angular framework itself. But something very important is that Angular material is released at the same time as Angular. So you will never stuck uh, when there is a new version of Angular because Angular material is not uh, up to date. So the day Angular is out, that same day, Angular material will be ready for you to use. And in fact, there is two parts in Angular material. The first one is the CDK, the component dev kit. And the second one are the material design components. So when you want to use Angular material, you have to install two packages at Angular slash CDK and material. And the CDK, is really great. So it helps you implement common behavior in your application. So, but first, before I talk about that, <laughs> um, in, in the CDK, you will find some unstyled components. So for example, if you use the Angular material data table, under the hood, it uses the CDK data table. And you can take the CDK data table and use it outside Angular material if you want. You have the stepper, 
and you also have the tree, the tree. Okay. We also have some utilities, so not bootstrap utilities, but I will, I will say some features, some services that will help you ease your Angular development. For example, we have a service called Platform, and it, this service, if you inject it in your Angular components, you can have many information about the platform you are working on. Am I on an Android device or iOS device? If you use this, you will have this kind of information. We have overlays. If you want to work with pop-ups and with um, models, you can use the overlay service to deal with this kind of stuff. We have maybe my favorite lay, um, layout features, and I will give you an example in a minute. And we can have many, many, many other services, like bidirectionality. If you want to work with languages from uh, right to left, like uh, Arabic, you can use this, uh, this tool to, to help you deal with that. And we have the famous drag and drop also. So this is an example of the CDK layout. So here what I do is I inject a service called Breakpoint Observer, and I invoke a, a method that will give me an observable which will contain some information about uh, the viewport. For example, here I pass many major queries, and in the in the observable, I will have information about which one of these is true. So on small devices, only this one will be true, the first one, mean with zero pixel. But on large on larger devices, all these major queries will be true. Then I can use this information to deal with my layout programmatically, not in the HTML, but in my TypeScript file. So the CDK can be used to build your own design system. So if you don't want or you don't like material design, you can use the CDK to build your own design system. It helps us uh, to avoid reinventing the wheel every time. So use the CDK if you don't want to, to use uh, material design. Then we have material components. Things like form controls, navigation, layout components. I don't like the term layout components because you have here cards, so maybe containers. container is a better term. We have buttons, pop-ups, and data table. So this data table uses uh, the CDK data table. OK, let's talk a little bit about taming your Angular material application because theming is a good, no, is a very important topic in material design. And when we speak about theming, what we mean is maybe shape, typography, colors. But today I will just speak about colors. So I have two palettes in my theme, a primary palette and a secondary palette. And maybe you can have another one, one, um, one palette, so for errors like that. And in a palette, we have different shades of the same color. So here in my indigo palette, I have uh, uh, the, blue, uh, the blue color, and we have the 50 shade, 100 to uh, 900. And we can use all these different variants in our, Angular in our uh, material design uh, application. And to use that, it is very easy. You just have to drop this attribute, color equal primary, and it will use the primary color. So if I replace primary with accent, so accent means secondary, uh, you will have the other color. This is very, very, very easy. So if you want to do that with your own component, because this works for angular material components, if you want to provide the same experience, you want to share a component which is steamable, this is not very easy. So. Let's take uh, an example. I want to build this alert component. And here you can see that I have some padding, some padding here, some margin outside. I use a lighter, my secondary color, the lighter one. For the text color, I use the darker variation of my palette, my secondary palette. And here you will see a small border which uses the primary color how to achieve that in Angular Material. And remember, we want our component to be able to change according to the, t the theme you are using. So if I build an application for Air France, I will use the Air France theme. 
and I want that same component to be able to be used uh, in KLM applications, which uses uh, which use different colors. So the official way of doing things is as follows: first, in your HTML, you define your component. So here it's a div with a class my alert. Okay, easy. Second step, in your SAS file, you have to write some uh, CSS for layout things. So padding, margin, border width, border style, and font weight. So these properties um, are not related to theming. So we, we put it here. And then we have another CSS file, a SAS file, actually. So this is a mixing alert term which take in, takes in my seam. And in my seam, I have my primary. So I use a material, angular material function, a SAS function to get the primary uh, palette. I do the same for the accent palette. And then I use some angular material functions to retrieve the color I want. For example, here I use 50 for the accent color here. And here I use 900 of my accent palette and here 100 of my uh, primary palette. Then I have to include that in my style.scss. So four step, and you have to do that every single time you want to build a new Angular Material components. So to me, Angular Material is great, but it can be improved. I think that taming our own components can be easier. I feel also that there are not many utilities in Angular Material. So you only have things for typography and for elevation, if you want to add a little elevation in, in your uh, uh, components. But there is no CSS layout by default in Angular Material. You have to use Angular Flex layout, which is still in beta today. So that's why we switch from, uh, yes, from the bootstrap grid. And the last part is that you don't have a CSS reset. And actually, if you use the Angular Material schematics to scaffold your application, it will generate a, a small CSS reset for you. But by default, you don't have a standard CSS reset in Angular Material. So, CSS reset, no. CSS layout, no. CSS utilities, no. <laughs> But the components are great. The CDK is awesome. So Angular Material and Bootstrap. So here is a comparison side by side between the two. So now, <laughs> which one is the best? Anyone? Bootstrap. I don't think so. <laughs> so in fact, you, you see that what is lacking in Angular Material is great in Bootstrap and vice versa. And actually, CSS reset, CSS layout, and CSS utilities, this is not a big deal. You can write your own, but if you are a lazy developer like me, you don't do that. You just steal that from Bootstrap. And so I am not lazy, I am pragmatic. <laughs> so I just did that, and it works like a charm. How to set up this? This is the Bootstrap setup. So I have, don't worry, don't care about the code. It's not the most important topic. So here I just import some bootstrap function variable mixins, and there is no CSS generated by, by these. And in the first file, I can customize bootstrap. For example, if I don't want to use the default breakpoints, I, I override this in this file. And next, I import the reboot, the grid, the utilities. And I have some little tweaks, very minor tweaks to do to make it work. Basically, I just remove the outline from uh, buttons, uh, stuff like that, because by default, Bootstrap Reboot add an outline. This is very easy. And then we have uh, the normal, the official way of doing things in Angular Material. So not a big deal. So right now, I will show you my way of doing things. So I, I will say my way, but I know that many projects at Air France KLM use this approach. and. Actually, developers like it because they, it makes them productive. So back again to our design challenge. So we wanted to build this component with theming baked into it. So me, I start with HTML. So it looks like this, okay? Only bare HTML. 
Then I add, I, I add classes one by one. So I add border. There is a class in Bootstrap called border. So I have my border here. I add another class, M5. It will add some margins. I will add another one, padding 5. So I have my padding. And I add font weight bold for, to make the font, the font weight bolder of, of my component. And this comes from Bootstrap. So I was inspired by the way of doing things from Bootstrap. So I extended Bootstrap utilities with my own. So here I add my border, primary 100. So this will set my border to the primary variation, the 100 variation of my primary palette. My text secondary, 900. So this will set the text, like you can see, with this color. And for the background, my BG secondary, 50. And that's it. And if a KLM application wants to use these components, he just have to have the same setup as me, and it works. Only HTML, I didn't write any CSS. So I will end up with the mess, a mess like this. <laughs> a div with a lot of classes, but this is easy, and this makes you productive. So you just go back from your, brow your browser to see the results to your HTML file. You don't write many CSS. So my class is for uh, layout, and the other ones for um, saming. So you can see this corresponds to the two files we had earlier in Angular Material. And how I do that? The same approach like Angular Material, but this time, I don't want to repeat this code over and over. I just want to generate these uh, classes once in my application. So I inject my theme, and I uh, create a class a list of classes. And at Alphonse KLM, we built a library that does it for developers. So they don't have to, to, to write by hand this. It is generated automatically. So this is the utility first philosophy. And I believe that this is the future way of writing CSS. So you don't write CSS anymore. I want you <laughs> to stop writing CSS. But sometimes you are obliged to write CSS. So Let's stop writing custom CSS and write CSS only when we have to and use utilities everywhere because it will make you productive. So we can use Bootstrap Reboot. We can use the Bootstrap Grid and Bootstrap Utilities, the Component Dev Kit and Material Components, and the new theming approach, and you will be able to build beautiful maintainable and responsive web application. And whenever I talk to developers about this approach, they have some concerns. So I have two minutes left. I will try to answer one of them, uh, some of them. And if you want to chat more about it, I will be at the gallery right after this talk. So the first one concern you have is, what about separation of concern? Because we are mixing CSS with HTML. I believe that today we are in a world of components, web components, Angular components, React components. So for me, the separation of concern is just a matter of separating files. We are not separating concerns. Our HTML is tightly tied to our CSS and our TypeScript. So an Angular component is TypeScript HTML and CSS. So we are not separating concern. We are just putting things in different files. Isn't this just inline styles? It looks like inline style, but it is not. For example, in inline style, you cannot add CSS for uh, state. For example, hover, you cannot do that. This is not inline styles. This is actually, to me, one of the ways you can build a true design system. So for example, I have a set of uh, possibilities for padding, which are provided to me by designers. I have only five options. So this will help me um, implement a real design system. And the last one is maintainability. What about maintainability? Because I have a lot of classes in my HTML. But to me, this is more maintainable than the old way, because you have a lot of files. And what happens when you delete some HTML code? Most of the time, 
you forget to remove the associated CSS. Actually, you don't forget, but you are afraid to delete the CSS. <laughs> so, I believe this is the right way, this is not the right way, but this is very, very maintainable, because if you delete your HTML, you delete also the associated CSS. So, to summarize, Angular material is great, but it's not perfect. If you use the best part of Bootstrap inside your Angular material application, you will be able to build very, very, very great applications. So thank you very much for your attention.